The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to the Jesus passed through towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then will you stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And you will say, we ate and drank in your company, and you taught in our streets. Then he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out. And people will come from the east and the west, and from the north and the south, and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. People magazine put them on the front cover of their most recent issue, calling them America's Sweethearts. They are the final five, the women who won gold in the all-around gymnastics celebration, I would call it at the Olympics. I don't know about you, but when I see them twisting and turning through the air, not knowing quite where the end point will be for them, I am utterly amazed. Now, part of that is because it's hard to even walk <laughs> when you get to be my age, but it is wonderful to see them tossing and turning and doing all these marvelous things for the glory of the Olympics and also to see that they are people who are ordinary folks just like you and me. And you say, oh, no, they aren't. They have bodies like you can't believe. Yeah, but how did they get those bodies? They worked very hard. They persevered in their goal. Their goal was Olympic gold. And they worked and worked and persevered and persevered and stayed focused on what they had to do in order to achieve what they did. Usain Bolt, 
I swear, has wings on his feet. How can any human being run that fast unless there's something different about his feet? But he's done it three Olympics in a row. That's 12 years, folks. That's a lot of time to be running that fast. And how does he do it? Through perseverance, by keeping his eye on the goal. And with that eye on the goal, working very hard to make sure that all those limbs and sinews and everything else stay in shape. Now you might wonder, what am I doing in the middle of a Sunday talking about the Olympics? What can that possibly have to do with the scriptures? Well, in the letter today to the Hebrews, we have to call, recall really, uh, an earlier piece in Hebrews where the author says, let us rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race that lies before us while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and perfecter of faith. So here is the author of Hebrews reminding us of the games, the Olympic Greek games of long time ago. Let's remember that our journey to the kingdom of God is a race. And let's remember too that that race will demand of us keeping our eyes fixed on the goal. And what is or who is the goal? The goal is Jesus Christ. And so we are being told by the author of Hebrews that this is not this race to Jesus is not a simple thing. It demands that we persevere all the time and that we keep our eyes on the goal and that that demands discipline, the discipline of being Christian. It is a far different goal than the Olympics offer to people. But it demands many of the same kinds of things taking place in our lives. Discipline, perseverance, focus. And the gospel is very much along the same line. Jesus tells us that we too, if we intend to be a part of the kingdom of God, must work hard at being Christians. It's not a one hour a week kind of thing. It is 24 hours a day, seven days a week of following Jesus. It demands perseverance. And so Jesus says to us, that we must strive to listen to the kingdom of God, to hear what we need to do. As he is passing on the journey to Jerusalem, and we have to remember that all these weeks and the few coming after, we will see Jesus on the journey to Jerusalem. The journey to Jerusalem means the journey to the cross. 
It means the journey that brings us salvation. And we will see it Sunday after Sunday, including today. And as he passes, going from one place to the other, he hears somebody say to him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? And Jesus doesn't say, oh no, there'll be tons of them. He doesn't say, well, yes, just a few will be saved. No, what he says is the path to salvation, the path to the kingdom of God has a narrow door. Not everybody who cries out, as he said in another part of the gospel, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God. He tells us that the door is very narrow. The door to a gold medal in the Olympics is also very narrow. Not everybody who goes gets to get one. And what does Jesus say? He says to the, to the people gathered around him, you can say, but hey, wait a minute. I ate with you. I had a good time with you. I was out partying with you. How can you now turn me away? And of course, the answer is, it's not enough to just be sitting with Jesus. You know, you could say, for example, as we do, what do you mean I ate and drank at the table of the Eucharist? How could you turn me away? But the key word here is what Jesus says, strive. And what does that word imply? That word is the beginning, if you look at the Greek, of the word agony. It means you've got to struggle, you've got to work to be a good Christian. It doesn't just happen. You don't win a gold medal at the Olympics just because you sit back and let your body go to flab and so on and so forth. You can't do that. You've got to have the discipline of an athlete. And what Jesus is saying to us is, we have to have the discipline of the Christian, which means following Jesus as Jesus intended us to follow him. It means doing the things that the Lord demands of us. It means we have to look around and find the poor and deal with them. It means we have to reflect in our daily lives what it means to be a Christian. It means we have to pray with the Lord as the Lord himself prayed to the Father. We have to keep on working to be good Christians. And we have to focus. Focus on being Christian. As I watched the divers last night, I thought to myself, that's focus. You get about two and a half seconds to jump off a, a platform that's way beyond where the water is, right? You get to jump off that do several somersaults, and somehow or another wind up going into the pool without a splash. Not many can do it. What does that demand? Focus. And it's the same thing in our Christian lives. We have to focus on Jesus. We have to strive to live as Jesus wants us to live. Now you might say, I'm toast. Right? No way I can handle all this. I mean, give me a break. Right? But I mean, in that sense, all of us would be toast. Because none of us probably has the immediate proper discipline to get where we need to get in order to be a part of the kingdom of God. And we keep on hearing that thing rattling around in the back of our brain. The door is a narrow gate to the kingdom of God. So what must we do? We must do what the author of Hebrews tells us. We must strive. We must follow Jesus, who is the perfecter of the kingdom of God for us. But the wonderful thing 
is that the Lord says to us again and again that the people will come from the north and the south, the east and the west to be part of the kingdom of God. So there's going to be a whole pile of people in the banquet hall of the kingdom of God, even though the door into that hall is narrow. That is our gift, to know that there will be many, 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 many people at the banquet of the kingdom of God. And our task in persevering, our task in keeping our focus on the goal, our reward for the discipline we will put on ourselves to be members of that kingdom of God is not just for a medal, even though that medal is made of gold. When we achieve our goal to be part of the kingdom of God. That is our reward. We will be a part of God's kingdom forever.